thanks for dropping in. This video is all about 3D printed containers. I'll share three distinct takes on the same theme, using different closing mechanisms. And since my last few projects have used a lot of bolts and glue, these designs will require no assembly and zero hardware. That's the intro, so let's go. The first container is the snappy dodecahedron box. The lid is held on with five snapping latches. To open it up, place two thumbs on one side of the box and pull it open like a clamshell. Squeezing the box can also work, as it deforms the lid just enough for it to release the latches. I also made a copy with numbered sides to match the 12-sided die it resembles. That said, I wouldn't expect this container to provide a fair roll. It's wildly unbalanced and would probably open on impact. I guess there's a third way to open this box. The lid comes in three different clearances, loose, tight, and impossibly tight. Results will vary depending on your printer, but for me, the loose lid falls right off. The tight lid requires some actual effort, and the impossibly tight lid won't come off without tools. These containers are easy to print and require no supports. Just print both halves open side up, like this. The base does have five bridging sections, one above each latch. But these are really short, no problem for most printers. This next container is the Flexi Purse. This squishy design is printed in TPU, a flexible filament that I haven't used nearly as often as I'd like, but it's a lot of fun. To open the container, slide off the optional lock and squeeze both sides, like so. This design is based off of loose change purses that were more common when loose change had more purchasing power. This coin purse can hold quite a lot more, especially if you print the largest size. While it's a lot of fun, TPU isn't always the easiest material to print. I'd only recommend trying this design if you have a printer you know can manage flexible filaments. The optional locks are printed in regular non-flexible material. They're pretty small and printed vertically, so you may want to add a brim. Other than that, and concerns with the material, this design is pretty easy to print. With Halloween coming up, it's very tempting to use these as candy containers, but I'd keep a few things in mind first. 3D printing isn't very food safe, even if you're printing in materials that are food safe in their raw form. Filament running through an extruder, for example, could pick up metal shavings along the way and 3D printed objects are far too rough to clean effectively. Any pits in the extrusion or gaps between layers make perfect homes for bacteria. So if you decide to use this or any similar designs as candy containers, it's best to pick a treat that's individually wrapped, just to be safe. The final design is the one I've gotten the most use from over the last month. This slide lock case is held shut with a decorative band which rides on two dovetail rails. Once the band slides off, the container opens right up. I originally designed this as a pen holder. That's why there's a divider running down the center. But now it's doing quality work as magnet storage. This design has four different band styles. Plain, which is perfect for adding your own embossed text or logos, Stripes for a bit more grip, hex holes which lets the case color shine through the band, and finally hex indents, an easier to print version of the previous band. There's also two case options, one with a vertical divider and one without. The container was designed with color transition filaments in mind, like this protopasta nebula. To get as many color changes as possible, the case is shaped to be printed vertically. This shouldn't be too difficult for most printers but it does make for a long print. In this vertical orientation, this design, like the others, prints without supports. Just beware of the bridging section near the top of the print. And there we have it, three container designs, each with different closing mechanisms. I hope one or two of them will prove useful to you or inspire a completely different design. But that's it for now, so until next time, happy printing and thanks for stopping by.
Oh, um, how about a bonus project for those that stuck around till the end? This is the Google Maze, a maze building toy that supports a ridiculous number of permutations. Now, is it a Google's worth of permutations? I don't know, I didn't really count. But each maze is composed of five possible wall pieces and a couple pegs to indicate where the maze begins and where it ends. Add a six millimeter ball bearing and you are set with a lifetime supply of potential mazes to solve. Or if you prefer, you can print one of several smaller base sizes. Either way, happy printing and happy rolling. Thank you.